Today, blimp airships fly above cityscapes, displaying commercial and political advertising. Still, these slow and seemingly harmless vehicles once played a crucial role in fearlessly hunting down Nazi U-boats in the Atlantic Ocean during World War II. As Germany began its ruthless U-boat campaign in the North Atlantic in 1942, the U.S. Navy had limited tools to identify and counter the stealthy and versatile submarines. Then, out of sheer desperation, the Americans deployed the six blimps they had available for patrol and rescue operations. Astoundingly, the K-class airships quickly proved to be an influential asset in anti-submarine warfare, helping rescue crews after U-boat attacks, locating submerged submarines before they could ambush Allied convoys, and eventually raining destruction upon German U-boats by themselves. By the time the war reached its final phase, German submarine crews absolutely dreaded the sight of a blimp flying over an Allied convoy. The U-Boat Campaign The American response to the German U-Boat's dominance over the seas in early 1942 was hindered by a deficient organization and a lack of anti-submarine warfare doctrine and equipment. Showcasing a complete lack of international awareness, the U.S. had prioritized the development of fleet destroyers instead of the anti-submarine ships they would need in a conflict against Germany. To make matters worse, American military leaders failed to respond to Germany's initial attacks inside their national waters because they feared that sending no destroyers would lead to more American ships being sunk. When U-123 sank the 9,500-ton Norwegian tanker Nornis within sight of Long Island in the early hours of January 14th, no U.S. ships were sent to investigate, allowing the submarine to sink the 6,700-ton British tanker Coimbra off Sandy Hook the following night. Thirteen U.S. destroyers remained idle in New York Harbor as American leadership failed to counterattack, and U-123 continued to sink one target after the other, sometimes coming so close to land that it was impossible to conceal herself. As the German U-boats left to resupply, the Americans decided to finally act and deployed one of its most recent acquisitions, six K-class blimps designed by the Goodyear Corporation. They were hardly the ideal solution, but they would have to do in such desperate times. The K-Ship In 1938, Goodyear had presented a few of its K-type blimp prototypes to the U.S. Navy, who showed limited interest in the project. Still, after asking for some modifications, the Navy finally decided to award Goodyear a contract for six airships on October 24, 1940. The blimps were acquired to fulfill a patrol and escort role, and the six units were delivered to the Navy in late 1941 and early 1942. When the Nornis tanker was sunk, only four out of the six Goodyear airships were operational, and the few novel blimps had to be thinly spread as they patrolled American coastal waters searching for U-boats. Despite their meager numbers and limited speeds, the blimps immediately became an important support tool for the Navy. K-3 was tasked with patrolling the area where the Norwegian tanker had been destroyed as it looked for the perpetrator. Soon, the airship commander learned from a nearby warplane the location of stranded survivors, and K-3 rushed to lower water and food to the dehydrated men. The blimp continued hovering over the survivors until rescue ships could arrive. For the following months, the four Navy blimps became crucial in finding U-boat attack survivors, delivering supplies, medical equipment, and inflatable lifeboats while relaying their positions to U.S. ships in the area. But as the U-boats returned, the blimps would go beyond rescue operations, taking the fight to the German submarines. Anti-Submarine Tactics Due to their capacity to hover and fly at low altitudes and speeds, K-ships could easily stay with convoys for a long time. Additionally, their numerous windows located throughout the control car provided excellent visibility, allowing for lookouts to spot anything, from periscopes to oil slicks on the water's surface. Furthermore, the K-ships could fly in conditions that grounded most other aircraft. Fog or low cloud cover were no obstacle for the non-rigid airships, which could continue their anti-submarine operations safely. Amid the United States' lack of specialized anti-tank ships, the K-ships quickly filled the void and became a critical asset during the first months of America's involvement in World War II. Their effectiveness led the U.S. Navy to immediately order 21 blimps for 1942 and an additional 21 airships for 1943. 
The new airships were further fitted to engage and destroy U-boats with specialized equipment, allowing them to identify the submarines even when lurking deep below the ocean's surface. Each blimp crew consisted of two radio men responsible for operating long-range radio communications, allowing K-ships to alert convoys, surface ships, and attack aircraft. They also used radar to detect surfaced submarines at night and in low visibility conditions. Still, their most formidable piece of equipment was known as Magnetic Anomaly Detectors, or MAD. This unique device could detect distortions in the Earth's magnetic field caused by a large metal object, such as a submerged U-boat. MAD had a range of about 400 feet, making the low-flying K-ships ideal operators of the game-changing technology. With the combinations of MAD, capable radars, and vast visibility, the Navy blimps had the most prominent advantage amid U.S. Navy assets for detecting and identifying enemy submarines. But MAD equipment was not flawless, and it could not separate magnetic distortions caused by U-boats from those caused by other debris, such as sunken wrecks. To address this issue, K-ships would often use MAD equipment combined with sonar buoys, which would drop from the air into the sea to produce a sonar effect that accurately marked the enemy's location. Thanks to their tactics and equipment, the blimps soon became the spearhead of the U.S. Navy anti-submarine operations. More Armament As K-blimps continued to show their extraordinary anti-submarine prowess, they were soon equipped with even more resources that would allow them to engage and destroy enemy submarines by themselves. K-ships could carry up to four sets of payloads, including 350-pound Mark 47 depth bombs, Mark 17 depth charges, or Mark 24 acoustic torpedoes. Two of these payloads would be placed within an internal bomb bay, and two could be mounted externally on the control car. Additionally, a 50 caliber machine gun in front of the control car provided the blimp with defensive fire capabilities. The turret had a wide range of motion, allowing the crew to target enemy threats at almost any angle. When a K-ship located a submerged U-boat, it didn't have to wait for reinforcements anymore. It could now immediately drop its depth charges, damaging the submarine, or at least forcing it to surface before Allied ships made it to the area. The result was that K-blimps became formidable anti-submarine weapons, frequently damaging enemy U-boats and assisting with sinking them. But their extended role came at a price, and blimps would often find themselves in the middle of enemy crosshairs. Sharks on July 18, 1943, K-74 was helping escort ships through the Florida Straits when it received radar contact. After investigating, the blimp came face to face with U-134. The airship immediately approached to engage, positioning itself above the submarine to drop its depth charges. However, a sudden malfunction prevented the charges from dropping, and the blimp was forced to use its machine gun to attack. The U-boat immediately returned fire, and with less protection and armor, the K-74's starboard engine quickly caught fire. It then plunged into the sea shortly before midnight. The crew barely escaped and floated near the wreck for 20 hours, surrounded by sharks. The ten men had to form a circle and use their knives and feet to keep the sharks away for hours on end. A Grumman G-21 aircraft eventually spotted the crew and attempted a landing to rescue them in the morning. However, in the excitement of the moment, the distracted team momentarily forgot about the sharks, and one man was attacked. The other nine crewmen were successfully rescued. Hunting down U-boats Despite the sporadic casualties, blimps continued to be highly effective in countering German submarines during World War II. On May 5, 1945, the U.S. Collier Black Point was sunk off the coast of Rhode Island. Several ships, as well as K-16 and K-58 airships, were deployed to the area to help search for the submerged enemy submarine. K-16 then identified the target in just a few minutes by using its MAD system. The surface ships promptly released a series of depth charges, while K-16 deployed a sonar buoy and detected sounds below the surface. Both airships then dropped their own depth charges on the submarine's presumed location. After dropping their entire ordnance, the K-ships documented numerous pieces of debris floating on the surface, marking the last destruction of an enemy U-boat in American waters. Then, as the war ended, and fewer and fewer U-boats ventured into Allied territory, a K-blimp would still play a key role in capturing a U-boat. 
On May 14, 1945, the captain of U-858 surrendered to the U.S. Navy, and a K-ship helped escort the submarine into port, marking the end of the K-ship's anti-submarine role during World War II. Thank you for watching our video. Please consider hitting the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more fascinating history-inspired content. Also, click the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos, and let us know what you think of the K-ship's role in World War II. Stay tuned for more.